Hello everyone, Cynthia Miller here and today we're going to paint Tofino Surf. I'm just setting up the waterline. I want to have shoreline on both sides and then just a spot in the center that uh, looks out into the ocean. I'm choosing my colors here from my grid. I've got a, an indigo blue and I'll be using just a touch of sand color as well. So I'm going to put some water on. I'm pointing out the, the skyline. I want to have um, a, a nice shade of, of uh, sky. Um, little, it, it gets foggy there. Um, and I'm just showing my other palette there for the sand. It, it, it's foggy in Tofino, and so we want to have this mist look. And so I'm using quite a large brush. It's a, I think, one and a half to two inch straight. And I want to carve around the, the hills that I'm going to be painting uh, later. This is just for the sky. We're going to put a really nice gray-blue color in there. And we're going to make sure that that water is on the, the paper, that the paper is absorbing the water, but not leaving puddles. You want it, the paper to be wet to take and accept the, the pigment that you're going to put on. And you can see I started out very light. I wasn't sure, um, you know, how much was on my brush. I've taken a, a round brush here to to spread the, the paint. And really what I'm doing is holding it up so it falls from the top. So I think this is really helpful to have that look of mist because you've got water on there. You've got um, sort of a look that is up and down. The, the clouds are sort of moving down and just fading off to nothing in the the uh, the water line there and uh, into the horizon. So hold it up and add some more. Just remember that your paint dries quite a bit lighter shade than, um, than when you apply it when it's wet. It's going to look quite a bit lighter. So make sure that you have the, the depth on there that you want for, for the sky. I, I like the crossword lines, um, horizontal lines, just to make it look like there is some cloud and mist. So we're going to do the same for the sand. I'm going to map out where I want my water with my big brush here, just going up to the edges of the, the dark rocks along the shoreline. And I'm going to choose sort of a tan yellow coral color. And you can add a little a shade of brown in there if you like. There's um, lots of no-name colors that I work with from my palette that I showed earlier. And I think it's just this shade that's going to look good with your sky. Um, you want it to be um, sandy, but it's, it's not a white sand. It's more of a, um, a beige sand color and we're just going to make sure that that also is held up so that it, it runs down so it's running down from the horizon water line down to the um, down to the bottom of your page I'm going to start with the landmass and I'm going to use my smaller brush 0 to 2 and Payne's Gray mixed with just a tiny little bit of my indigo blue and um, I want to make um, it look like there's water splashing against the bottom of the rock. So my line along the shoreline is very jagged. I'm basically painting the negative space of the waves. Now there is quite a bit of water on my brush. There is water on the page. I didn't necessarily water down the rock face first, but it does blend um, as I move up. So I'm starting at the bottom and moving upward and just keeping that jagged look along the bottom. I'm going to just fill in one of the rock faces that uh, smaller closer to us and just map that in see how that looks and um, so wet clean brush number two so I'm, I'm pushing some water onto the bottom of the the rock face along the shoreline again creating a jagged edge and then I'm just going to add my Payne's Gray in there and start building up that rock face. So this rock is volcanic I believe and um, it is very dark a lot of uh, black 
uh, rock, um, really cool tide pools. I've been to Tofino so many times and, and I just love this this look where you've got the ocean and then all these little um, outcrops of, of black rock and uh, of course the trees grow on it as well. Um, lots of um, little sea life uh, in the tide pools and, and fun to explore. Really fun to explore. So we're we're just paying attention to along the water line because we want that to look like water splashing up and just sort of building up with the the dark and the gray. Now remember to keep your dark on, along the shoreline and as you're building up the top of the um, outcropping it, pull your uh, brush upwards so that you're overlapping that hillside line and you'll find that if you have some water on there there's going to be a nice blend to help you make it look like a little bit of trees and bush are um, growing on top of this it might be an island it might be an outcropping I'm not sure but uh, peninsula whatever it is um, it's fun to to bring this to fruition it's almost like you're you're creating little um, alcoves and and little valleys um, if you allow sort of your intuitive brush to take you let your eyes see what you're creating so that you uh, leave it and let that natural um, combination of water and color just create the, the little forest on this island. I'm going to add the trees now I believe is a very vital component of West Coast uh, drawing is the lone tree at the end of the peninsula or you know a gathering of trees that sort of slope towards the inward uh, wind. They bend as they grow very light at first just using a, a fine zero to two brush and again with just a tiny little bit of the Payne's gray just um, you know a lot of the trees are leaning uh, inward because the wind catches them constantly that's just the way they grow on a, on a bit of a slant um, and yeah just just if you if you're a little bit afraid to put those in freehand uh, just practice on a, a spare piece of paper first. So I've added the um, rocks in there, the rest of the stone, and I have chosen a rather bright color for the shirt of the surfer. I want him to stand out. I want his reflection to stand out. And um, a little bit of uh, black for the legs and blue for the board. Um, as well as the, the black on the, the cap. Um, a lot of times they wear the wetsuits, dry suits, uh, just depending on the temperature, I think. But they do this year round. It's really quite amazing to see them all go out. Sometimes there's dozens of them out there at a time. And uh, just let that dry. We'll add the blue to the board when, when that's dry. I think the secret to getting the proportions right is to practice on a piece of paper and when you're ready to paint just start out very light and use minimal brush strokes just the base amount of brush strokes that you need. Now we're going to start painting the reflection in the sand. The sand is wet and it reflects the rock formation so we're just going to go around with a very small brush this is 02 round and just create a little bit of um, the same shape reflected into the sand on all uh, three rocks there. And you'll see how that starts to sort of come together to make it look like there is some wet to the sand. Now we're going to turn our work upside down and we're going to create the reflection of the bigger land masses. So with my larger brush, I'm sorting out where the high point is and just going down from there. It's not going to be exact because again, it's a reflection. And you can see where my water is flowing down. I've got something propped underneath my artwork so that the water will flow down. 
and again that helps to create a bit of the the mistiness and of course with the reflection you want it to be just light and with many different facets in it you can see how that yellowy sand is is sort of coming through and you can pick up the gray with your brush to let that yellow show through. So just have a look at it and see where you're missing. And there I'm just filling in the, the end of the little peninsula there with the tree. And I realize that the smaller landmass uh, is not level, so I fill that in a little bit because it's it's straight across and it should be it should look like it, it it is straight across there so I've added a little bit more um, just to make sure that that line comes through there so I'm looking at the um, lower part of the larger landmass and I want to add a little bit more to it so I'm holding it up on a slant so the water um, moves upward and I'm adding a little bit more water I'm adding a little bit more pigment and just giving a little bit more fog look to it mist and blending and um, you can see I'm adding some white pigment now so I've added water and uh, just adding some white pigment to, to let that flow upward it uh, makes it look like there's a bit of a mist above the water and it sort of gives it a little bit more edge to the dark area when you use the light pigment. So I'll show you again on this other side, just adding some water and holding it up so that it flows upward, adding a little bit of white pigment so that it looks like fog and just enhancing that, that um, shoreline that we started there and filling in the gap there with just a tiny little bit of that white. It's got a little bit of the gray mixed in with it as it mixed on the page and just putting in a little bit more now to enhance that feeling that there is an ocean out there. So the horizon goes a little bit beyond the shoreline, right? And we're just putting some horizontal strokes along there to make it look like that sand is, is wet. There's some water coming in. The, the surfer is going out towards the, the ocean there. And so just play with that a little bit. Um, if it looks a little bit too dark, then pull some up with your brush. But basically that is how we make this beautiful Tofino Surf come to life. And um, this next step is really going to complete it. We're putting in the reflection of the border now. And we're going to put some water on where the legs are first. We're going to put the shape of the board on with water. And then we're going to put this pigment on and just let it blend to sort of keep it so that there's a little bit of shape to it, uh, a little bit of the orange color from the shirt and the, and the dark color um, for the cap. And you'll see that it, it just sort of blends when that paper is wet just enough to make it look like a reflection. So I think that really completes it uh, well. And if there's any other reflections that you want to enhance or or just to give a little bit more focus to. Have a look at where your shoreline is in relation to the rela um, reflection. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I, I really love doing this piece. It, it reminds me of being there. And and um, as I said, it's such a, a cool place to, to visit, to watch the surfers and visit the tide pools and really feel the, the West Coast. Have fun.